We're going to bring in CBS News senior national security analyst Juan Zarate now, who's in Washington. Juan, good to see you. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh, let's talk about Saudi Arabia to start here. No official claims of responsibility, but as Charlie mentioned, ISIS is suspected. Um, does this uh, spur the kingdom, uh, Juan, do you think, into, into more decisive action? Well, Saudi Arabia has already been seized with the problem of both al-Qaeda and the Islamic State attacking in, in the kingdom. You'll remember that in May 2003, after al-Qaeda attacked in Riyadh, there was a harsh crackdown by Saudi authorities. ISIS has been trying to demonstrate its presence and deepen its reach in the kingdom. And these three coordinated attacks demonstrate that they've developed a, an infrastructure. And certainly the Saudi government is going to try to uh, rest that out and try to squash it before it gets even more dangerous. You know, ISIS-controlled territory seems to be shrinking, yet the reach and frequency of their attack seems to be increasing. What are we seeing here? Well, I think there are two effects. One, inside places like Iraq, uh, this is a group that's adapting. And so as they lose territory, they're moving more toward a terrorist model. We've seen that in the attacks in Baghdad uh, and in other parts of Iraq. But outside of Iraq and Syria, they've developed a, an infrastructure, an ability to launch and deploy operatives this is after years of having thousands of foreign fighters flow in and out of the area and certainly an ability to inspire people in Europe, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and the Middle East to attack in place. And so we're seeing the fruits of years of planning and operations by the group and certainly inspiration to attack in this holy month of Ramadan. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, Juan, is that we knew that there would be increased attacks during the holy month of Ramadan. Can you talk about the connection here, especially when you look at that map and how many attacks have happened across the world? Well, for Muslims, the holy month of Ramadan is a month of peace and prayer, but for violent Islamic extremists, it's a time for attacking and plundering. Uh, the, uh, the spokesperson for ISIS in May called for increased attacks in Ramadan, and al-Qaeda and ISIS, uh, certainly over the past few years, have constantly called for more attacks during the month of Ramadan as a way of increasing the effect of those attacks. Juan, what, what about potential uh, stepped-up U.S. involvement here? I, talking about Iraq specifically here, we saw the, the, the horror that uh, unfolded in Baghdad over the weekend. The U.S. You know, pulled out in 2011, re-engaged at least from the air um, in, in, in recent years. What's next? Well, the U.S. has been trying to empower local forces and proxies to go after the ISIS safe havens. I think one of the sad realities here is that this is a group that has established a foothold not just in Iraq and Syria, but in places like Libya, West Africa, even Afghanistan. And so the United States is having to enable and work with partners to try to diminish that safe haven. The problem, Jeff, is that they've used these safe havens in places like Raqqa and Mosul to launch operatives and to strategize. That has to go away if we're going to see an end to these kinds of coordinated operations abroad. What a mess. Juan Zarate, thanks so much.